Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Well, good morning. Uh, the cat and I welcome you to my shop. And uh, we got a little project here that's kind of uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I'm going to bring you in closer and show you what we have in mind. So, have a look there, yeah. Uh, this archer, well not archer, he actually builds bows, you know, bow and arrows. Uh, he needs this tool made. And he contacted me, oh, about a week or so ago. And, uh, and you know, I gave him a quote of the time it took. And it was not quite right for him. And then I thought, geez, this will be like a great... Uh, video so I gave him a deal <laughs> and uh, hey by the way uh, if you're a um, YouTube presenter I'm uh, interested in giving you a deal for some project so that we can uh, coordinate our our video uh, and and work together so contact me if that's the case and we'll go from there so anyhow we're going to make this little piece it's in 4140 so it's going to be a little bit harder material but uh, i think it's going to be just fine well i want to highlight these uh this project i've got coming up um pretty exciting uh this woman approached me um and she has a burlesque um presentation that she does in corporate America and she wants me to make this margarita glass or maybe a champagne glass uh, five feet high and uh, so uh, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just building her a general idea of what I have in mind if this is certainly not finished uh, but it's generally where I want to go uh, and this is called the maquette um, in sculpture terms and so you know we've bent six brass rods and tapered the ends and uh, that gives us the general uh, concept so that uh, and also she wants it by December 31st which is when she's going to do this particular uh, burlesque and now you can just imagine a woman hanging out in this glass with maybe a, her legs hanging over a little bit <laughs> very exciting uh, so you know it's certainly not going to be in brass but I'm thinking it might be gold uh, painted or something like that Anyhow, uh, oh, and the other thing is, is uh, my wife, uh, we're going to swing around here. Uh, my wife uh, decided that uh, she was tired of uh, trying to wash all my shirts and my pants. And so she purchased a, uh, a bib uh, apron for me. <laughs> And I thought, well, you know, I really don't want to wear a bib apron, but I'll try it out just because, you know, she, she was happy to purchase it for me. And, uh, and since I love my wife, you know, hey, why not just try it out? Oh, I love it. It's great. I mean, because I'm constantly wiping my hands on my on my shirt. And, you know, you've seen me, man. I look like a ragamuffin. Uh and this kind of protects everything, also protects from from splatter, from welding and cutting and that sort of thing. So, uh, hey, we are now bib overall, not overall, but bib uh, apron uh, happy. All right, so we've got a piece of 4140 in here. And the first thing we're going to do is take our, our base measurement, two and a half inches, and I, you know, I love working in this uh, mode, which is inches, half inches, quarter inches, rather than 
uh, five hundred thousandths, two hundred and seventy-two thousandths. Uh, <clears throat> it's so much easier. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is swing this bit around, bring it up a little bit, and it doesn't have to be accurate. And I'm thinking this might be able to just plop up, up fully, and maybe even more. That looks good. All right, so now we're going to um, neural this whole side of it. Hopefully, my neural will bite into 4140. Let's give it a try and see. First, I guess we're going to plug in. Nice. Yeah, just a little bit of a neural. Feels pretty good. It's a little rough. I think I'll just take just a little bit of a file to it. <clears throat> Much better much better got a good grip to it so take our knurling tool off and we're gonna take it completely off the off of the uh, holder because we don't use it that often put our regular bit back in because we use this thing all the time So now we want to turn this around. Oh, first I want to knock off that edge. <clears throat> Let's see what we've got here. That's a little high. Still high. Yeah, a little bit low. Okay, we're going to test it out with my old uh, ruler trick. Just push it up against there. And if it's perfectly straight up and down, it's just right. If it's a little off, it's not just right. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Tighten that and then bring our head around so we get about a 45.
I gotta go get my glasses. I'll be back. Okay, that looks pretty good. Nice and clean. Uh, look, good. a little bit of a sharp edge there. Let's take it off of the file. Yeah, nice. Okay, good start. Now, two and a half inches, yes. Two and one and a half inches takes us right to pretty much the edge here. Now, we're going to spin this around. But since we have the knurling on it, we're going to put some uh, aluminum. And so let's see what this next part is. It's three and a half inches. So let's come out to three and a half inches. There's three and a half right there. And I think we can just take this over to the saw and cut it off. And since you've seen me cut many things, we will not show that part of the, the operation. All right, so as I said, we're working with that one side being a uh, knurled edge or a knurled surface. So we don't want to mac that up. So we're going to bring this in. Let's open it up a little bit. Ah. There we go. And we'll bring that in. And this, and we have ourselves a ball game. See how we're doing? to do is uh, oh wait a second we can't go that close can we sure we can yeah that'll be fine okay now what we have to do is we have to come up with a degree and a half because this is supposed to be a three degree taper at least that's what it says on the instructions. So we're coming into a one and a half degree taper. Okay, so we are at zero right there. And we want to come one and a half degrees. Okay, we've got it supported. And I think we're back to cutting our taper. Now the problem is, is as we get in close, and I can't remember how big that taper is. Well, we can't find the sheet. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to go, and when we get to the end, we'll uh, 
figure out what happened to the sheet. It was right here. What the heck did I do with it? I remember I used it to figure out what the one and a half degrees was. Get a little oil on these ways. Let's just go. Okay, well, uh, we may have a problem here. As I'm going, I realize that what's our distance? There's three and a half right there. I realize that uh, we're going to have to bring this down pretty tight, and that center hole is not going to not going to be conducive to that. Let me go find the paperwork. And I'll okay, well, we started again. Uh, two reasons. Uh, I just picked up the piece of metal that I that was sitting next to the paperwork and uh, it calls for three quarter and what do I cut? One inch. So uh, now I've got a, a little tapered shaft of one inch. Uh, and also what we're going to do is we're going to come into the and use the uh, the uh, you know once I had the the taper figured out then I could measure it and we could come in and do the tracer attachment so now the tracer attachments all set up and ready to go and all we got to do is run it if you could see it or not but this thing is bouncing around like a champ which tells me that something's wrong in here first thing we're gonna check and see if it's tight and it is tight so some kind of adjustment oh that's even worse there it is. This chip is thinner than the rest of the chips. I see it now. Well, that's easy to easy to fix. If I can just find the right size chip, we'll go ahead and swing this over. Take that one out, put that one in. Let's see what that does.
Well, I think that's the last cut. Well, we're going to take one cleanup cut uh, because it gives no indication as to how big this taper is. It's only that it's three degrees. So we're just kind of taking it down randomly and looking at it and going, well, I think that's just about what we're looking for. So one last cut. Okay, one last cut and we're at least off to the next step. We're gonna take about five thousandths this time. Nice easy cut. think we're where we should be now let's come back in and get rid of this roughness because one of the things it does specifically talk about and that is smooth surface so a little action and we will see what we can do smooth as a baby's bottom okay well uh, we'll get back with the sandpaper and we'll go from there we'll be back This is a bow tool, or a bow maker. Yeah. I don't see you. Oh, you are. I am. Okay, we're set, I think. Uh, nice and polished. Now we got to come in and cut this thing in half. And we're going to do that tomorrow. See you then.